Welcome back to the World That's Good podcast. Y'all, actually, welcome myself back because yeah. I'm the one that's yeah. been gone. Y'all have been here. You've been here. You've yeah. been hosted. I hosted one. Mom hosted one. Yeah. This is Candace. our new office space. No, the. To, well, I guess kind of. This is actually Honey's room. So yeah, it's she has nursery. her own room. Yeah. Yeah, but she pretty much stays in our stays room. Stays in our room, yeah. Yeah, that's just real life. Yeah. But yeah, so mom's hosted, dad's hosted with Crowder. That was hilarious. That was hilarious. Corn dogs and cheese sticks. That was an interesting one. That was, that was. John Lucas hosted with Chris McClarney. That one was awesome. That was awesome. I honestly thought my dad forgot to ask the question, but he just waited to the end. So that was kind of unique. Six minutes left, he did ask it. And left. it kept me in engaged. I was like, is he ever going to ask, what's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? And he did, and it was awesome. <laughs> Crowder's advice was so good. So it's been a fun month. I've missed being on the podcast. I'm glad to be back. Uh, and so we thought, what better I'm way to, to be kick back. it off with our birth story? Because, you know, obviously the reason I was gone is because we had a baby. Little Honey James is finally here. And it was crazy yep. because... Even the podcast before that, I was so pregnant towards the end. I was like, I cannot breathe normal. I can't yeah. talk normal. I have to pee every five seconds. And so I was laughing at everything and my laugh was so loud. So I'm glad uh, to be back to, you know, more myself. I love pregnancy, but now also having honey here is a gift. And so yeah. uh, we wanted to share our birth story because birth stories are super popular. Everybody loves to hear a good birth story. And ours was really amazing. Um, it was wild and crazy and scary and all the things. Yeah. Um, and so without further ado, let's just get to the story. Let's just get to let's it. Let's just get to the story. So I kind of... Discla- wait, disclaimer. You're, this is It's our birth story, but she's the one that gave birth. Yeah. Do you think that they thought you gave birth? No, but you just said our birth, so I was just letting them know that this is it's it's about you. Well, You're we're in it together. It. We're yeah. together, and you were a great partner. Thank you. So, um, back up way before we had birth, and I have to just say, um, I am like the biggest preparer of all time. Am I not? Like anything yeah, I'm gonna do, I have to like prepare for it a lot. So if I'm gonna speak, I'm preparing six months before the conference ever happens. Like I love to be prepared. I don't really like to walk into a scenario unprepared. And so when it came to birth, I was like, oh, I got 40 weeks to get prepared. And so I- You planned and prepared every single step. Oh, I had planned and prepared everything I could. Like I watched every single YouTube video from epidural, no epidural, this way, that that way, this mm-hmm. method, this, that method, yeah, at home, at, at the hospital, this yeah. exercise, that tea to drink, this whatever. So I read it all, I saw it all, and honestly, I tried it all. If and it was thing, like a method, none of it honestly worked. Well, you're you're jumping ahead. I am jumping ahead, but but we'll get to that. The point is, I was going to be very prepared, and so I had a plan. I wanted to have a natural birth. I really wanted to do it with no epidural, but I wanted to do it in the hospital. My plan was my water would naturally break. I'd labor at the house for a little while. We'd have a doula mm-hmm. come to the house. You thought you'd be on a walk and it would just break. I thought I would just be walking one day and pop. There goes the water, the movie moment. I labor at the house, barely make it to the hospital, had the baby naturally, push mm-hmm. through the pain, but you know, all the things. Well, let me just tell you, none of that happened. Uh, everything I planned for did not happen, but except, I have to except say- Except the pains at the house. I have to say, yeah, I did have pains at the house. Nothing that I planned for happened, but everything that I prayed for happened. And that was really yeah. cool because there were so many things Christian and I specifically prayed. And I'll go ahead and tell you the three prayers we prayed and I'll get to the three later. But one prayer was that honey would be strong. The next prayer that she would be sweet because the verse um, that her name is kind of after is in Proverbs 16 where it says, gracious words are like honey, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. And we love mm-hmm. that the honey in and of itself is so sweet, but it's also so strong. And so we pray to be yeah. sweet and strong. And we also prayed that she would have a lion inside of her lungs that would be fighting for her. So when she's born that she would just breathe out just the praise of God. It says in Psalms 8 two, out of the mouths of babies and infants, you have established strength. And I love that. And so that's what I was praying that honey would just already be established in strength. And whenever she comes out, that strength would be just heard in the room and that she would be like, have that lion from the tribe of Judah in her lungs fighting for her. And when she cried, it would be like the sound of praise. Mm -hmm. And I like couldn't wait to have her to hear that sound. So that was a prayer. So anyways, um, 
and I prayed for my water to break and all mm -hmm. these silly other little things. But um, I just really, that's the three things that were really important to me. That she would be sweet, that she would be strong, she'd have a lion inside of her lungs. Yeah. And that her little cry would be like the sound of praise. So anyways, um, like I said, none of the things I planned for happened. Um, and at the end of pregnancy, you know, I'm super pregnant, really big. And, you know, we're thinking Waddling it's got to be any day now, You're right? Waddling. And everybody was telling me, you know, try to eat eggplant, try to drink raspberry tea, try to do a bouncy ball, try to crawl around the house on all fours. And when I tell you, I was on all fours with my pregnant belly. Did all, we get that walking, one on video? Yeah, yeah, we, we did. did yeah. All over this house. I drank the raspberry tea. I did the rose oil. I did, I mean, everything on Google on how to induce labor, I did. And nothing happened. I even did the whole membrane stripping thing yep. three times. Nothing happened. I mean, this baby was like in there to stay, okay? So, but again, I wanted to wait it out. I wanted it to happen naturally. I wanted to wait. And uh, finally, Christian looked at me and he said, Sadie, look, okay, if you get to 41 weeks and nothing has happened, then I think that you should start really listening to the doctor. Because the doctor had told me at this point, like, Back up to like 38 weeks, he kind of started mm -hmm. telling me, you know, you need to think about getting induced. Um, this could end in a C-section because the baby is really big. So the best chance is you get induced. And then uh, that's just the best for you and the baby. Yeah. So he was kind of telling me that. He was kind of saying that's going to be the best option. But in my mind, I was like, no, I want to go natural. And then if I'm not, if I'm going to get induced, then then it would kind of throw off the whole plan, no, everything yeah. I prepared. Plan, and so yeah, then I was like, it might as well just get the epidural. <clears throat> and so anyways, I was thinking, but there's no way I'm going to go to 41 weeks. Well, of course I do. 41 weeks comes and it was... We went back to the doctor. And it's really sweet because the night before that, I was praying about it. And I just felt such a peace knowing that, um, I guess a, a peace in the surrender of like God... Mm -hmm. I actually don't want my plan. I actually want your plan. And so if tomorrow I go in and I'm not, if I haven't dilated anymore, if I haven't changed, and like, I really want your plan. I really don't want mine. Mm -hmm. So I surrender that. Like I mentioned earlier, sleep has become really important these days because let's just say we're not getting much of it. So when we do sleep, we want it to be nice and Helix Sleep has offered a very nice sleep for us because their mattresses are amazing, specifically because it's literally what you picked out. Let me explain. Helix Sleep actually has a quiz that you can take. It takes about two minutes. You can pick out exactly the kind of mattress that you want that best fits you. You can take it with your husband. You can take it with your wife. Y'all can find the perfect sleep for you. Everybody's unique and Helix knows that. So there's several different options to choose. They have soft ones, medium, firm mattresses. They also have uh, mattresses that are great for cooling down or great for those who need to get a little bit more warm. And so literally whatever you can think of, you can customize it to fit your sleep. I took the Helix quiz and I was actually maxed the Helix Midnight mattress because I kind of wanted something not too firm but not too soft and that was just a great in between. So seriously, this mattress is gonna be whatever you pick out. So it's got to be the best, right? Like, why would you go mattress shopping anywhere else than where you can actually find exactly what you like? Helix is actually awarded number one best overall mattress in Wired Magazine in 2020. So they really are legit. They have a lot of people saying they're legit. Uh, go to helixsleep.com slash Sadie. Take their two-minute quiz, and they'll match you with a customized mattress that is best for you. They also have a 10-year warranty, and you can get it and try it for 100 nights risk-free. It's pretty awesome, I have to say. Those even pick it up for you if you don't love it so really what's the risk in this so it's super easy process honestly we love it because you can get online do this get a mattress ship for free to your house really no hassle in this and we love it you're gonna love it too because you get to pick out what best suits you helix is offering 200 dollars off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash sadie that's helixsleep.com slash sadie for 200 dollars off and two free pillows so we went in and I'm not kidding, after three membrane strips or whatever and every labor induction thing you can possibly try, I had not dilated at all and I had not progressed at all. Zero. Z like zero. And so the doctor was like, it's time, you know? And so I said, well, what are you doing tonight? And he was like, you're ready? I'm like, I'm ready. So we went home and we got our stuff and 
on the way to the hospital, I was like so excited, you know, we, we started getting giddy. I mean, really, I kind of just already surrendered my plan and my prayer the night before. But I did tell Christian, I was like, I can't believe my water didn't break because like that would have sort of been so fun for that movie moment, but that's fine, whatever. And so it's just kind of silly. Well, we get there, um, get into the room and we pray the whole way there and we prayed for nurses who would be spirit filled and mm-hmm. all these prayers that really were above and beyond. And we were just like, and even if we don't encounter that God, we were like, would we just be the type of people that we would be so, our eyes would be so fixed on you that yeah. whenever we have this baby, everyone in the room would be impacted by just your presence there. Cause I know you're gonna be near and I know you're gonna be my strength. And so would we just carry such a peace and a presence that people would see that? So we prayed for yeah. that too. Well, we get there and it was just so cool to see all these prayers unfold. So first of all, my nurse was actually, like, the first nurse member was like a big fan, mm-hmm. but not in a like funny not a, way. Not she was way. like, I actually watched so many of your videos and they like changed my life this year and I was going through such a hard time. It was just so sweet. And so she was just amazing, so nice. And then um, whenever she hooked me up, she said, so are you having any contractions? And I said, no, girl, I was like, I have not progressed at all. I was like, but I mean, I've had like a million pains, so I don't Mm -hmm. really know what that means. She hooks me up and she's like, you're having contractions. She's like, you're in labor. And I was like, what? So I had like no idea I was in labor and I just, happened to go in because the doctor said it was time and so they were like well you're you're gonna be fine like you're great and so they said well let's try to like we're gonna put you on pitocin labor through the night so got on pitocin so it made my contractions happen a little bit more um and you know that was getting a little bit more intense and more painful and more painful so i was pretty much up all night and then at 6 a.m i was like okay it's time i'm getting the epidural so i called the nurse and i'm like hey like um, can I get an epidural? She's like, yes. And the epidural lady came in and it was just so cool because I was telling Christian, I was like, Christian, this is so cool. Like people are like texting me saying they're praying for me and they don't even know that I'm in the hospital right now, like having her. And mm-hmm. whenever I said that to Christian, the epidural nurse said, that's so sweet. And she was like, I just want to let you know, I was praying for you on my way here. And I was just praying that I would do the best job that I can, that God would just use my hands to do the best that I can. And it was just so cool. Cause again, like another person who was just like yeah. so kind and spirit filled. And anyways, she did do the best job ever because that thing was awesome. I have oh, to yeah. say that was, it was amazing. It was a game changer. It was a you. game changer. I felt so good. And honestly, I've been in so much pain my whole pregnancy that it was like the one moment and all of it i mean from pregnancy and then like even going into postpartum how much pain it was like the one day i actually didn't have that much pain it was crazy because it was was the one couple hours. yeah a couple hours not trust me (laughs) it gets painful but a couple hours so that was going great we were having a blast i mean we were laughing and just excited about our baby christian was dancing to the beat of our baby's heartbeat i mean it, it was just a joyful day um, and then even your mom coming in, like that was amazing. Yeah. His parents got in just in time like 10 to minutes be there. We, um, so that was sweet because they're from Florida. So everything was just like really falling into place and just really beautiful. Um, so then it came time to push. And this is when things get a little crazy. No, no, no. Back up to the to your Oh, water the break. water break? Yeah. Okay, okay. I forgot. Gosh, there's so many details. So that morning, whenever... Um, so you got the epidural at 6, around 9, 9. 30. About 9, 9 30, the doctor, the doctor came, came in, in and he said, okay, you know, you're going to check you. And he was like, your water hasn't broken yet, so I'm going to need to break your water. And I was like, dang it. Like, I wish my water would have broken on its own, but okay. And but, then- but before he said that, he said he had to go to another surgery. So he was going to come back in to break your water. So tell the story from your perspective of what happened. No, no, so I'm well. saying, so you got there for like 6, around like 9 or 9.30. He came back in to check on her. And then he said, I have to go do a C-section real quick, but when I come back, we'll break your water. And before he was about to walk out to go to the C-section. So actually what happened, should I tell a true story? No, just. It's kind of funny. No, just just to tell the water breaking. I know, but should I Dang, tell no. it? No, don't. No, no. I think I have no. to. <laughs> no? No. <laughs> you really don't think it's okay, okay, just Okay, you're too far in. Just okay, so honestly, I thought I pooped in the bed. <laughs> And I was like, I went to the doctor and he was trying to explain to me how he's going to come back for the C-section. And I just start uncontrollably laughing. It wasn't not so awkward. It was, very it was awkward. so I started laughing. I said, look, I'm so sorry. It was sorry. awkward because he thought he was going to clean it. So. Oh, no, no, no. I said, I'm so sorry. I'm trying to be like, I'm trying to listen to what you're about to say. But like, I am pretty sure I'm pooping right now. And I can't really tell because of the epidural. And I feel really weird about it. <laughs> 
<laughs> my mom and Christian were just like laughing and I was laughing and he was not laughing like at all. And I was like, I know this is so embarrassing. I'm so sorry I even told you that. I just felt like I needed to tell somebody because you're trying to talk to me and I don't think I'm really listening. And he goes, no, I think your water just broke. And I was like, no, 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 that, trust me, I don't think that but, was my water. Yeah. And he was like, no, I think your water just broke. And I was like, no, 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 don't look, don't look. So as she's saying this, she's trying to encourage him not to come look. So she's like <laughs> sniffing and like trying to like look to, to, just to prepare herself. <laughs> so that actually I happened. was so embarrassed. Anyways, it so was my water. Say, my water, water did, did break, break, which was just so crazy because literally when he said, I'm going to come back to break your water, I start laughing, thinking something else happened. And then that actually was my water breaking yeah. in that moment. So that was actually pretty and you crazy. And you didn't get number two. And I so. didn't. So which does happen to people. If that happens to you, it's fine. It happens. But that actually did not happen. It really was my water. Yep. And it was pretty hilarious. And was that fine. was probably one of my favorite memories in the day. I can't believe I forgot to tell that. Yeah. But I'm telling you, like, the whole day, it was so crazy. So many things happened. So that was cool. Then... <laughs> <laughs> So that was cool. <laughs> that so was fast good. forward, <laughs> fast forward to the pushing. This is when things get crazy. This is a few hours after that, yeah. A few hours later. So that was nine in the morning, two o'clock. It was like time to go. So we started pushing and like, side note, we had worship on all day long, mm -hmm. okay? Worship was in the room, which really was amazing. And I would highly encourage set the tone anyone the going into labor like blast worship music. There was such a peace and such a strength. I mean, so many times I just found myself just worshiping um, throughout the day. And our nurses even were worshiping mm -hmm. as, you know, I was pushing, it was kind of funny. I remember we were all singing, those who wait on the Lord mm -hmm. shall renew. Well, we were just in worship, it was awesome. And so everything was going good. And then there was, um, I got to the stage where it was about to happen, like the head was coming through and the doctor told me the next push, she's she's here. And so I knew that was about to happen. And Oceans was on. I specifically remember that. It was very yep. chaotic, but it was like so, so motivational, honestly, yeah, in the was. moment. And so I go to push and everything gets like crazy. Like I all of a sudden was like pushed down on the bed and like they pushed my mom out of the way. And um, every nurse in the room was like just over me. and. They were pulling my legs and like pushing my stomach as hard as they could. And honestly, I didn't know what happened. I thought, I thought they had to like go into, like I thought they cut me open. I thought something happened, they cut me open because of how painful it was when they pressed on my stomach. I didn't know what, now I know they were pressing my pelvic bone to get her out because what happened was Honey got stuck. So mm -hmm. her Patrol shoulder got actually got stuck, which is really, really rare. And since then, we found out that only happens in about like one percent yeah. of births. And um, it's what our nurse said is the scariest thing that can happen in a vaginal delivery. And so they said when it happened for them, like time just stood still because what was happening is the shoulder was clamping the umbilical cord, causing her not to get air. And so in that moment, like every second counts. Um, and they couldn't get her out for two minutes and 10 seconds. So this really was mm -hmm. very scary and really dangerous. Thankfully, I didn't know what was going on. And besides, I knew something was wrong because of the pain and uh, like the doctor had just told me next push, she's here. And so what normally takes three to five seconds took two minutes and 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. Then her knee got stuck after they got her shoulder out. So it was just like chaotic. I got to say, now that I'm a mom, I want to be stronger and healthier than ever. And the great thing is, I don't really have to change what I was doing if I keep eating Magic Spoon. Magic Spoon is a protein-packed cereal that is so fun because you get the benefit of, you know, having fun eating cereal, but also the benefit of health, which is amazing. Let me tell you some facts about this. It is cereal that keeps life fun. It is zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. There's only 140 calories a whole serving okay that's pretty great great way to start your day it's keto friendly gluten free grain free soy free low carb and gmo free pretty much everything free except for the fun it's awesome you can build your own box or get a variety pack with available flavors like cocoa fruity frosted peanut butter 
blueberry and cinnamon my personal favorite i like the fruity one so i like the blueberry so good all these flavors are amazing you can get them in a pack and get them individual it's so fun and on the back they actually have a game that you can play and it honestly just makes me and christian feel like kids again eating cereal and playing games in the morning great way to start protein packed as well so forget the protein shakes protein powders if you don't want that you can literally just get your protein by eating cereal so go to magicspoon.com slash woe to grab your delicious box of cereal and try it today and be sure to use my promo code woe at checkout to save five dollars on your order magic spoon is so confident in their product as well that it's backed with a hundred percent happiness guarantee so if you don't like it for any reason they'll refund your money back no questions asked that's pretty legit and that's some confidence right there remember get your next delicious bowl of cereal at magicspoon.com slash woe and use the code woe for five dollars off that's w-h-o-a so in that scenario, what typically happens is they break the shoulder to get the baby out. And then they have to take them straight to the NICU because they've lost so much oxygen at that point. They normally can't breathe on their own. Um, and you're looking at some serious problems. If the baby does not come out in three minutes, which she did in two minutes, then they push her back in and do go to an emergency C-section. So there's mm -hmm. a lot of like, what could happen, what could have happened, what if that happened, and honestly, that was like a whole lot to deal with later, which I think we're gonna talk about in the postpartum podcast. Mm -hmm. But anywho, they got her out, and it was crazy because one thing through the day, like I said, we had worship going, and Christian had mentioned earlier that day, like that morning, he said, I really wanna play that song, Million Little Miracles, when Honey comes out, and I was like, Christian, if you turn away from me the moment she comes out to go search Spotify for a song, like do not miss that moment. So whatever song comes on, it's going to be powerful and we're going to always remember it. Well, the crazy thing is like when she came out, she wasn't breathing and um, yeah, her face was like purple and her body it was, like, was like white. Red. She was like, like screaming. And it, no, no, no. She wasn't. No, screaming. yet, yeah, not yet. But I'm saying, no, like, no. She, she was not breathing at all, and so it was like very scary. And all of a sudden, in like the silence of the room, it, it was like silent. All of a sudden, you hear the song "Million Little Miracles" come on, and he didn't do it. Like he did not click the song. It just happened to be next, which doesn't even make sense because that song had already played yeah, that I day. I mean, I don't even know. And so. Like in the moment of them taking her from me to the table to try to get her to breathe, I'm just listening to that. Like I got miracles on mil miracles and million little miracles. And then all of a sudden, like we heard the prayer that we prayed, the lion from the tribe of Judah, the roar, if you will, the praise, she literally just like screamed. And it was just a miracle because like the nurses said like she really should not have been breathing on her own. Like they're about to take her to the NICU and she just started breathing on her own. Like they gave her a little oxygen that they had there and then she just did it on her own. Then it was a miracle because her shoulder wasn't even broken, which they, they tried to break it to get it out. So it was supposed to be broken and it wasn't broken. And then the nurses came and they're like, well, it has to be dislocated. It wasn't even dislocated. They had three doctors check her shoulder because they were in disbelief. It didn't break, it wasn't dislocated, and she started to breathe and never had to have any other mm -hmm. care because she just did it. She was so strong. Mm -hmm. And they said that the doctor said, they're like, well, because she's so strong, like that's probably what made her shoulder suck is because of how big she is. But also what made her okay is because she's so strong and because, yeah. because how big yeah, she, she is. She got stuck because she's so big, but she was okay because she's, she's so, big. so big. And so it was just amazing. So in that day, we experienced like such a peace that surpassed under all understanding. We experienced a miracle. We experienced... Mm -hmm. um, just the things that we prayed and the sweetness that she carried and the strength that she carried and the, mm. the cry that she came out with. And the reason I prayed that prayer, which seems so random, is yes, I heard that sermon about that verse that the children sounded like praise, but also I... Um, Whenever I had COVID, I was pregnant with her and I was struggling to breathe whenever I had COVID because my lungs were, you know, getting attacked. And there's a song called Gratitude and in the bridge it says, oh, come on my soul, don't you get shy on me. And this is like, lift up your song or something because you've got a lion inside mm -hmm. of those lungs, get up and praise the Lord. And so um, I kept praying that for myself that like I would not get 
Like my soul would not get shy. Like I would not get so weak that I couldn't praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so I would just pray that that lion would just fight for me. And I prayed that for her when I prayed that for me, that during her birth, the same thing would happen, that she would just worship. And it was just amazing that she really did. And so we really saw a lot that day. And one thing that we've been talking about a lot is just like, what it looks like to experience a miracle Uh, because miracles are obviously miraculous that's what they are and like there's such a joy when a miracle happens right like when you see a miracle you're like wow god did a miracle but like Mm -hmm. for the person like experiencing a miracle normally when you need a miracle it comes out of a moment of desperation Mm -hmm. it comes out of, of a scary moment where you literally need something supernatural to happen in order for someone that you love to be okay. Like that moment for me was like, is my baby that I just, you know, carried and that I already love Mm. gonna be okay? Because she's not breathing. Like that two minutes and 10 seconds where you're like, I need a miracle um, is so scary. And then Mm -hmm. it happened and we rejoiced, but there's such a process even like, all the fear and stuff we experienced in that time. So we didn't even listen to that song for like- No, like five weeks. Five weeks. dramatic, yeah. But then when we did, it was just amazing. We just rejoiced and we're so thankful. And we also understand that, you know, a lot of people going through labor and delivery, that the miracle doesn't happen, that Mm -hmm. the baby isn't okay or the mama isn't okay. And we wanna say like, we um, can't imagine, you know, that, that feeling because we know how scary it was when we thought it wasn't okay. And so our heart goes out to everyone in that position. And I know that even though that is so bad, I know God is still good. And I know that even in the moment where it was so scary for me, there was a peace that surpassed understanding. You Mm -hmm. know, there was a strength in the room that the worship carried. And um, I pray that you feel that too. You know, that wherever you're in, whatever situation you're going through, whether you received the miracle or you didn't, Mm -hmm. that the miraculous power of God's strength would just be with you to carry you. Um, And so we process that and it's crazy. And we're so thankful for our daughter, but it was just the wildest day. I mean, it it was was amazing and hard and- Yeah, it was the craziest 12 hours. Funny, like the poop thing, but then like what in the world, it, like the seriousness of the moment. Mm-hmm. It was like crazy. Well, we didn't know the seriousness of it until like that night. Yeah. 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 I started to get a hint about the serious of it as um, I was being stitched for hours and mm-hmm. I was like, something went real mm-hmm. wrong. And of course, the seriousness yeah. of it mm-hmm. when she wasn't breathing, I knew something was yeah. wrong, but not until the nurses came back yeah. and told us. But you know what's amazing? This is so cool. So I told y'all that. We really prayed that the nurses would be impacted by just whatever happens in the room, the worship, the strength of God, the peace of God, the mm-hmm. joy, all the things, um, the peace that I carried and all that different stuff. Well, one of our nurses that was like the main nurse that kind of really took over in the moment whenever Honey's shoulder got stuck, she um, wrote us a letter. Mm-hmm. And it was just the most amazing thing because she was like, I can't even tell you like how much that impacted me. She was like the worship y'all had in the room set the tone of the whole room. And she said like seeing the way that the water broke at the time that your the doctor said the water was gonna break and that honey breathed and that her shoulder was okay. And she began to recall all the things that happened, like which was really cool because we didn't even tell them like those are the things we were believing mm-hmm. for. But like she noticed all those things. And so it just like made us realize like when you're intentional with your prayers and like what you want to see God do and like what he can do through you, like it's amazing to see like what your testimony does in the lives of others watching. Like she got to see God because like Mm -hmm. we set an intention for that day to be able to see God. And it was just like so cool. So she wrote us that letter and like we loved our nurses. It was amazing. And everyone in that room just experienced something that we've never really experienced before yeah um which was amazing and honey was also nine pounds and five ounces yeah so almost every nurse like hospital administrator person came in they're like oh wow she's a big baby like we just want to see how big she is we heard she's so big yeah, and so we heard her shoulders okay her, so yeah she did kind of get made fun of for her chunkiness but she's a chunky miracle yeah. it's amazing but yeah, she, is she really is miracle. so strong it's crazy like i heard that it takes babies like three months to like hold their head up and literally on day, four. day four we put it on her tummy and she was like 
Hello, world. And she's very alert. Like, she's she's so, and I know we're going to be those parents that are like, she's no, a I'm, genius. You, I'm not going to, you're, oh, you're not Oh, I am. Be. When she held her head I'll up, I'm like, this girl is going to the Olympics. I'm telling you, she's the most athletic thing I've ever seen. Like, I am totally, <laughs> totally that mom. But hey, why not? I feel like it's it's yeah, fun to yeah. me. We can, we'll balance each other out. We will. We'll balance each other yeah. out for sure. And it, honestly, we're just so grateful. And there she is right there. You want to see if she can come in? We'll try. We'll try. She Honey is um, very loud. She's still got and that a, lion inside of her lungs. <laughs> and She's she, an opinionated seven-week-old. She is. Come baby. on, sweet girl. Hey. Here she comes. Hey. Give her a shot. Hey. Look at that belly girlfriend. Hey. And this is the sweater we put her in right after. That was yeah. her first little outfit in the hospital. <laughs> Oh no, oh, sweet <laughs> girl. Hey, show them how big you are. Wow, you are so big. You're so strong. See, Ooh. I told hey, him look. you were going to the Olympics one Ooh. day. I told him you were going. So she's our chunky miracle. And that's our birth story. Do you have anything else to add? I don't, I think you nailed everything. I would Do you have anything else to add? She spits <laughs> up sometimes. Oh, are you telling him? What are you telling him? What? This is your first podcast. Okay, mom. So you were, we're calling you in because you were there for the whole thing and you experienced it all. And we were just talking about, um, which Christian actually told me not to say it, but I like had to say it whenever I thought I pooped the bed, but it was my water breaking. <laughs> Um, classic christian you telling you not to go too far and then you just you just well, go all the way i had to give the people what they <laughs> were going to be dying to know because i was like should i tell them he was like no and i was like really he's like no don't say it and i was like really you don't think i should say it he's like no because we always talk about this how like i do not get embarrassed which is really to a fault a lot of times because i'll just say something but christian experienced like secondhand embarrassment from what i should really be embarrassed by <laughs> um okay no, I that's your superpower, Sadie. Wow. I think that's your superpower that you don't get embarrassed because you so. tell the fun stuff. That's all the details people want to know. And all the women out there totally that have had babies totally get it and totally relate. So that's true. Well, thank you, you know. mom. Thank you. But how how extremely awkward was that moment, honestly? Like whenever we were oh. all <laughs> laughing and the doctor did not laugh at all. <laughs> Actually, you say you don't get embarrassed, and and you really don't. But I actually think I saw embarrassment cross across your face in that moment, and it was so weird for me to see because you usually don't. But yeah, you were like, um, I think I just pooped myself, and the doctor just didn't respond. Really, he kind of just looked at the monitor, and I walked over to try to comfort you. I started to like. Pat your, you did. pat your arm to be like, it's okay. It's really okay. It happened, you know. You did. Um, but I was thankful that the outcome was what it was and not what you thought it was. Well, yeah, I was just saying it was just so awkward. And I did actually get embarrassed. And I wouldn't have been – I wasn't embarrassed about the situation. I was embarrassed that he did not find it funny. And then I was like, oh, well, it's really yeah. not going to be funny whenever <laughs> this is not water. <laughs> so anyways, that was hilarious. And then um, we got to the po point of talking about also – um, of course, the this intensity, and I was just kind of sharing how yes. um, everything was going great, and I was honestly like, honestly, it's such a joy filled day. It was fun. Um, it was, mm -hmm. you know, painful the way that like, yes. labor is painful. But I told him I had an awesome epidural, yes. and I got to give it to the epidural doctor because that was fantastic. Um, but <laughs> still painful. But then, uh, whenever I went to do the final push. I told him Oceans was playing. It was very motivating and everything was great. And then it all of a sudden got really chaotic. And I kind of mentioned how they pushed me down on the bed and they pushed you out of the way. And so from your perspective, because you've been in mm -hmm. several labors before, what did that feel like to you? Did you know something was off? Yeah. So first of all, I want to say it was just absolutely the greatest honor of my life to get to see my baby girl have a, her own baby. And it was just, it was, it was such a joyful day. And it was so sweet to see, 
you and Christian's relationship in, in the moment throughout the day, in the fun times when you were, there was so much laughter and fun and in the worship and the prayerfulness that came with bringing honey into the world and the way that y'all were just such a team was so sweet to be a witness to. And I'm getting, you can't see me, but I'm getting a little teared up thinking about it. So just the whole day was really that, just that special is, is, you know, as you can imagine. And, um, but and yeah, I, that moment. Even, before you um, even go there, though, I have mm-hmm. to say, because I didn't say this when Christian was here, but he really was the best partner ever. And honestly, I told oh, him, my I said, babe, you need to do a YouTube for guys just like going into labor with their wives, because I feel like that's just like a very unknown time. And he just handled himself mm-hmm. so well and was so encouraging and was so supportive and I mean, all day making us laugh, but also just affirming me and like who I am, what I was doing. And I, I, he would be embarrassed when I said this, but I'll say it when him not here. Remember what he said to me, whatever I, I was like, I was really pushing it. He was like saying all the right things. He's like, you're doing great. You're doing so good. And all of a sudden he just goes, you're the sexiest person to ever give, give birth. And I just start laughing so hard. And, like, and I didn't even say anything when he said it. I just like laughing and like kept going. I don't even know if I laugh but internally. I was laughing because like, I was pushing, so I probably didn't no. laugh. Yeah, I don't even think I actually no, laughed it was, in the moment. Yes. But it was so funny yes. to me. So then later, like, we were, like, reminiscing on the day, and I was like, Christian, do you remember whenever you said you're the sexiest person? He's like, I do remember that. And he's like, I didn't even think you noticed it. And I was like, I internally, I thought it was so funny, but it was, like, too intense to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> well, he said, he actually was like, when you, when you brought it up to me, he was like, you told me to, I was just trying to think of anything encouraging I could think of. And that was the most encouraging thing I could think of in the moment. <laughs> it was, it worked. That was hilarious. It, it was, it was so sweet. He was, he was the best partner teammate. He just kept his eyes locked on you. And he just had in like, y'all were looking at each other's eyes, encouraging one another. And it was a really sweet moment to see. So definitely he should do a tutorial about that. And I know that a lot of that was because y'all did prepare. And I thought that was really neat and special about your relationship which where y'all did prepare for that moment say okay when it gets hard this is what I need from you and then when it gets like this or you know if you could just do this for me it would be such a great help and you're so good at encouraging him as well so I would definitely those of you who are in you know pregnant right now and about to go through the labor process really prepare prepare your heart and your mind and your and your spouse and Mm -hmm. And um, let them know what you're going to need in that moment. And, yeah. um, Which you know, we did talk that was about. Really neat to see. We talked about how much I did prepare and how, like, really everything I prepared mm-hmm. for and planned for it didn't actually happen. Like, I thought I was going to do this and this yeah. and that didn't really happen. But what did mm-hmm. happen is we did prepare in the sense of I had had a whole, like, shared notes with Christian that I, like, put in, like, uh, declarations, affirmations, scriptures. I put in uh, the worship playlist we listen to all day. And I put in like things that I would like love from him. And it was like, whenever it gets hard, like lock mm-hmm. eyes with me, affirm me, um, tell me like, you know, we're about to meet her or something. And like, he did all those things. Mm-hmm. And yes, I like asked him to do it before him, but it meant so much that he did. And like, you know, in that moment, that really did help. And so, yes, the preparation that I went through was kind of funny. I will admit and agree that I (laughs) over-prepared, but some of it really came in handy. Absolutely. It really did. So back to the moment. Okay. So back to the moment. Yes. So everything was, it was just very smooth and, and beautiful to see. And yes, you were, you know, experienced pain, like labor, anything really, really great comes with some hardship and difficulty to get there. But, um, but yeah, so I was right there, you know, kind of right by your side, helping you, um, encouraging you as well to push. Christian was right at your face, just looking at you. And we were in that moment where, you know, the baby was about to come out and, um, her head, are we telling details like this? I don't know. You can cut this out. I I told it. I told it. Okay. Okay. So her head comes out and I've seen, I've gotten to, I've just had the privilege of being in another burst, which has been amazing. It's a miracle every single time. So normally when the head comes out, you know, the next push, the rest of the body just comes out and just follows, you know, that's just kind of how it happens. And it's just happens all really quickly. It's kind of like this slow, slow process. And all of a sudden it's just like, 
here. Well, um, Honey Said came out, and then the next push, nothing happened. And I could kind of notice the doctors and nurses because I have been in a, this before and realize, oh, wait, okay, this is not quite what was supposed to happen. Notice they get a little nervous and then a little bit more nervous. And then a nurse comes and just kind of like says, let me take over right here and just pushes me out of the way. And I kind of come up to say to, to you and um, just start kind of encouraging you to just kind of let you know that everything's going to be okay. Cause I don't know what you're understanding right now. If it's, if you're mm-hmm. if you're nervous or if you think this yeah. is normal or what, I but, remember you saying because so I, I remember being a little panicked for a second, just not knowing what mm-hmm. was happening. And I, like I mentioned, I thought that they yeah. had to cut me open or something because I didn't know what the pain mm-hmm. was or what was going on. And then I remember mm-hmm. you saying they know yeah. what they're doing. They know what they're doing. You're okay. They know what they're doing. And yeah. Just let them do what they know to do. And then I think you yeah. got a little faint because we yeah. we lost you. Yeah. So that's the part. Yeah, that's the part. <laughs> that's the part. I'm up there encouraging you. Then all of a sudden, I feel a little, I start getting a little lightheaded. Things start going a little, a little fa- uh, fuzzy in front of me. And I thought, they certainly do not need me fainting in this moment. That would be the worst. That would have been scenario. the worst. And they're like, we're trying to birth your baby and every, all the nurses are so attentive to you. And like, literally, like, I mean, I think you had four nurses like pushing with you, like trying, literally trying to, my stomach you know, to get her out. Birth, you know, physically pushing your stomach, pulling. I mean, this is kind of a, a tough um, scenario, but I, I thought about if you've seen it on like, I don't know, National Geographic or something where like uh, the horse is born and literally the vet is like pulling the, the bull out. It was uh, kind of like that. I mean, I it was that. Like a horse. Like I did. Everyone comes to attention and like is pulling, pushing, and I'm about to faint. And I'm like, okay, we do not need this right now in this moment. So I just kind of stepped back and sat down in the in the chair no, and like leaned funniest- my head forward a little bit. And um, afterwards, I think that the no, funny thing is that, the nurse, yeah, you tell that. didn't you say you were going to pray? <laughs> or did they just think no, you went no, to no. pray? I didn't say it. <laughs> yes. Afterwards, the nurse said she thought I went back and sat down to pray. And I was like, well, yes, I was praying. <laughs> I definitely was praying. But also, I was about to pray. <laughs> so anyway, so I sat down for a minute. And, and, and I legitimately was praying. And it was absolutely amazing worship filled moment because I know y'all probably told about the song miracles was playing and yes I really was praying for a miracle we knew that um you know we needed honey we needed honey to come out all of her Mm -hmm. and we needed it quickly and so it was definitely um praying as well and trying not to faint and praying that I would not faint too yeah and um and yeah, she comes out and um, she's not, her coloring is not great because it had been a little while that she had um, been a little bit in distress and her coloring was not great. And I just remember praying God that God would give her breath and that she would just turn pink. And mm-hmm. it was just like a miracle. It was in that moment. She yeah. just turned the perfect little beautiful pink she and did. she started breathing. And um, we were like, thank you, God. Everything's going to be all right. And um mm-hmm. It was really beautiful, holy, um, miracle, spirit filled moment. Yeah, that um, it was. I'll never forget. It was. never forget. What um, I I hear that my face is pretty much the color of you can't see my shirt right now, but white. Um, that I I was looking. Like, you I was, were. Yeah. <laughs> I was like I was also at the myself. I didn't feel that way. I was just felt yes. very. Just I I was like it just kind of felt like I was frozen in time honestly, um, but mm-hmm. uh, and then the the yeah. other funny thing oh wait go ahead I I was gonna say I wasn't sure you know what you were knowing or realizing or what so I follow you know them over to the station with Honey to kind of make sure everything's good and all that. And that's when she's kind of trying to pink. And I, I say like, is she going to have to go to the NICU? And they're like, well, we, we don't, we, we hope not. We're going to give her, you know, we're going to give her a little oxygen and watch her a little bit. And 
So I'm still praying and I'll look back over at you. Yeah. And you're like as white as the sheet. <laughs> and so because it was it was a very difficult. I know that like it's, pro- it's hard to convey, but you you worked really hard. It was a uh, very hard labor and hard delivery. And you were as pale as a ghost, but you were um, glowing on the inside because I could tell you were so happy yeah. to get to finally meet your little girl. Mm-hmm. I, was, I was so happy. It was crazy. Um, I don't know if, if we can cut this out if he doesn't want to share this, but I think this is pretty funny. Whenever y'all were over there and they were giving Honey oxygen and seeing if she was going to have to go to the NICU and everybody was checking her shoulder, <laughs> you want to tell what Christian's concern was? Oh, <laughs> yeah. And all the preparation, we forgot to warn Christian that babies come out with a little cone head <laughs> because, you know, out for a little while. And um, so all babies have a little bit of a cone head. But honey, she had a pretty good cone head. She was stuck for quite a while. You pushed for a long time. And so her head um, didn't quite look normal at first when she first came out. But that's what all babies look like. Every one of my babies look like, you know, when they first come out. And um, Christian says, um, is, does anybody notice that her head looks a little weird? <laughs> like, she's like, really nice. and said it to me. And the nurse is like, has anybody checked that on that? And we all just kind of started laughing. It was a great little light that moment. So we funny. Like, and he didn't even. Totally normal. Promise. He, he really didn't know that that was a thing. It was so funny. He he was telling me later. Yeah. And he was like, I mean, everybody was over there checking her oxygen and checking her shoulder, and I'm like, does anybody see her head? Like something's wrong with her head. And so <laughs> I thought that was so funny. I was gonna say, I think that's one of the reasons they put those little hats on babies. You know, on newborns when they first come out, they put on a little hat on just because you know. Yeah. Their head it's to keep them warm, but also yeah. whenever you see a newborn, you usually see them with a little hat. So you don't notice um, yeah. the cone head underneath. <laughs> I never even saw the cone head. I just saw her with the hat, so I didn't even know what 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 the all the talk was about. But yeah, yeah, it was it was truly amazing. <laughs> all in all, it was just the best day ever, and we were so grateful, obviously, for all the little miracles. That song could not be more accurate to the day. It's the best way to explain it. It's just that song, the words to that song. Um, and having you there was so special. And we're going to get to the postpartum in another podcast. Um, but I might have to call you in on that one too because you really you really saw me at the, at the worst moments and the best moments. And so thanks for being there along uh-huh. the whole journey, Mom. I would not have missed any second of it. I loved every bit of it. And um, yeah, I just think that um, that day was was pretty amazing and one that we'll never forget. And little honey girl is um, worth every every ounce of the little little pains or emotions or ups and downs that you went through to get her here. That's right. That's right. Little honey Jay, she's awesome. Well, thanks, mom. Love you.